Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Dino Times. I'm your guys' host, Dakota Morgan, coming to you from Phoenix, Arizona. Today, we're going to be talking about an absolute tank of a predator. And no, not that type of predator. A carnivore from the very interesting time, the Cretaceous period. And that's going to be the Acrocanthosaurus. Now, the Acro has actually been in pop culture for a little bit of time here, thanks to, to Jurassic Park Operation Genesis and other video games in the Jurassic franchise as well that have brought the animal to the spotlight of media. It could be bigger, but you know what? Let's dive into the facts about this dinosaur. You make your opinion. Acrocanthosaurus means high-spined lizard, and we're going to get to that in just a minute here. And its uh, species name is Acrocanthosaurus atoconsis. Acro is a part of the genus of Carganodontosaurid family, and it derives from the early Cretaceous in North America. Now, Acro is known for the high neural spines on the vertebrae of the animal, and that means it kind of is like a big mohawk along the spine, one could imagine there is. And we have some theories of what exactly those did. Uh, the theories go of the support a ridge of muscle on its uh, neck, back, and hips. So if that's the amount of muscle on there, you get a high amount of muscle along your whole body like that, you're going to be able to do some damage. Now this was a bigger predator too, is 36 to 38 feet in length and 4.9 to 7.3 short tons. And it was considered to be an apex predator of the area as well that would be living in. Of course, its skull was 4.0 to 4. 2 feet in length as well. So this animal, with the amount of muscle it had on it and, the, and its size as well, is definitely taking down some pretty big herbivores. And if you were small enough, there's no way you're evading this predator. Well, there's a way. We'll get into that in just a second. The holotype and the paratype was discovered in the early 1940s and described later in the 1950s. That one consists of two partial skeletons and a partial sc skull material in Oklahoma. But more was actually found. More different specimens were found in the 90s. Now... Not a lot of animals did hunt sauropods, depending on the sort size of the sauropod. Of course, a lot of carnivores go after the babies and the juveniles, but adult sauropods have been found to actually have acro teeth marks embedded into the bones, meaning these animals did hunt the sauropods, which you'd have to be very confident, very confident predator in order to take down a sauropod. Now, though, its femur was longer than its tibia and mortar metatarsals, indicating it was not a fast runner actually at all. So this guy was a slow-moving built tank. It had the muscle to take you down, rip through you like nothing, but it could not run fast at all. Now the function of the spines is actually unknown. So while we do theorize that there was a lot of muscle attached to them, that the function of them mm, is still unknown. But we have theories of temperature control of the body, communications, fat storage, and of course muscle as well. But muscle being the highest one as far as we could recall. But, you know, could be also as well as... Uh, sexual orientation as well. Dr. David Holland would probably love that one, but it's big possibilities on what it is for, but most of the theories point towards muscle. That's a little bit about the tank of the Cretaceous, the Acrocanthosaurus. A T-Rex versus an Acro would be an interesting fight, to say the least here, and one I don't think we've seen ever. But if you guys did enjoy these facts about this predator here, the Acrocanthosaurus, leave a like, and of course subscribe to the channel for more paleo content, more dino times and nerd stuff of uh, gore. And of course, if you guys want to follow me on social media, check the description box down below. Thanks guys, and remember, science is real.